Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at estimations which is part of the measurements and errors topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson we're going to try to estimate values in the real world. So that includes describing what an order of magnitude is, detailing why estimating values are important in physics and estimate basic values of different dimensions which falls into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification. So, which includes estimations of physical quantities, orders of magnitude, and estimation of approximate values of physical quantities. Now, on many occasions, physicists, other scientists, and engineers need to make approximations or estimations for a particular quantity. So examples could include, what is the distance to a certain destination? What is the approximate density of a given item? How, how large has a current got to be in a circuit? Now, Many approximate numbers are based on formulae in which the input quantities are known only to a limited accuracy. Now, as you develop your problem solving skills that can be applied to a variety of fields throughout the study of physics, you'll also develop skills at approximating or estimating. So you'll develop these skills through thinking more quantitatively and being, a, being willing a, to take some risks. Now, as with any endeavour, experience helps as well as familiarities with the different units of the different quantities. Now, Estimations are very, very important because they allow us to rule out certain scenarios or unrealistic numbers which you obtain in problem solving and they also allow us to challenge others and guide us in our approaches to our scientific world. Now, the one thing you can use to estimate values is an order of magnitude. Now, an order of magnitude is a measure of how many digits a value contains. Now, most orders of magnitude use a base 10. So, for example, the value 1000000 Zero, zero has seven zeros, so this becomes 10 to the 7. This illustrates that this value must have eight digits, because the power of magnitude value is always one lower than the number of digits in the value. This is shown because 10 to the 0 has one digit, because 10 to the 0 equals 1. Now, this means we can express an order of magnitude as 10 to the something. So you could say an order of magnitude of a quantity is 10 to the 7. Now, this states that the value is approximately uh, in this example, 1 and 7 zeros, 10 million, but it could be slightly higher or it could be slightly lower. It's an approximation or an estimation. Now, it's important in the field of science that we can estimate values and at least be in the right mathematical region of the true answer. So in many situations, it's often sufficient for an estimate to be within an order of magnitude of the value in the question. So, for example, if the actual answer was 3 times 10 to the 8, so, for example, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, then it's appropriate to estimate this to the order of magnitude of approximately 10 to the 8. So our speed of light estimation is approximately 10 to the 8 meters. Now we can use orders of magnitude to estimate values and calculate values from these estimations. Now this is done for two reasons. Reason one is to plan experimental dimensions to ensure practical work can be done and reason two to find a rough value of what you should get to check if your answer in a question is correct. So for reason one you want to estimate what the measurable values should be in your investigation so that you can observe them. So for example, if you estimate that it should take 60 seconds for the uh, particular object to heat up, it allows you to understand when the observation will be taken. Now reason two allows you to estimate whether the answer you should be getting is the correct answer. So if in an examination you calculate a value, you can estimate what the value should approximately be to see if your answer is, a, is in the right ballpark. Now, when you need to estimate values, you can use several tricks to help you do this. So the first trick you can do is to get big lengths from smaller lengths. So when estimating lengths, remember anything can be used as a ruler. So if you're struggling to estimate something, imagine breaking a, a big thing into many smaller things, estimate the length of one of the smaller things, and then multiply to get the length of the big thing. So for example, if you're trying to estimate the height of a building, think about how many floors are in the building, and then think about how many humans could fit uh, on vertically on a floor. You know the height of a human. You can then use that to estimate 
uh, the height of a building. Another example, or sorry, another trick to use is to get areas and volumes from lengths. So when dealing with an area or volume of a complex object, introduce a simple model of the object, such as a sphere or a box. Then estimate the linear dimensions, like the radius of the sphere or the length, width and height of the box first, and use the estimations to obtain the volume or area from standard geometric formulae. So if, for example, you had to estimate the area of a door, well, you can, you can estimate the length of a door easily you can estimate the width of a door easily so you'd multiply the two values to get your estimation for your area the next trick you can do is get masses from volumes and densities. So when estimating masses of object, it, objects, it can help first to estimate its volume and then to estimate its mass from a rough estimate of its average density. Now recall, density has a dimension mass over a length cubed, so, it's ma so mass is density times by volume. Now for this, remember it helps that the density of air is about 1 kilogram per meter cubed, the density of water is about 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed, and the density of everyday solids max out at around 10 to the 4 kilogram per meters cubed. Now asking yourself whether an object floats or sinks in either air or water can get you a ballpark estimate of your density and therefore you can work out the mass as an estimation very quickly from that. Again, if all else fails, if you really have no idea what the estimation could be, you can bound it. So what this means is for physical quantities which you don't have a lot of intuition for, sometimes it's, but you can best to think like, well, it must be bigger than one thing but smaller than another. So for example, if you know the length of a bigger uh, object that's bigger than it and then a length of something that's smaller than it, you can work out what values it lies in between. And then finally, the last thing which you always should do in any estimation is does this make sense? So check, check to see whether your answer is reasonable. How does it compare with the values of other quantities with the same dimensions that you already know or can look up easily? So for example, if you get a wacky answer, so if you estimate the mass of the Atlantic Ocean to be bigger than the mass of the Earth or a time span to be longer than the age of the actual universe, check to see whether the units are correct, then check for arithmetic errors and then rethink your logic to arrive at an answer. Now, orders of magnitude are generally used to make approximate comparisons and reflect large differences. So as we mentioned before, an order of magnitude is a multiple of 10. So the orders of magnitude of a physical quantity is its magnitude in powers of 10 when the physical quantity is expressed in powers of 10 with one digit to the left of the decimal. So you could have 1 times 10 to the minus 7 meters or approximately 10 to the minus 6 meters. Now both of these are examples of orders of magnitude, but in estimations we tend to use the bottom format for writing these values. Now, it's important to note that orders of magnitude are generally used to make up very approximate comparisons and reflect large differences. So if two numbers differ by one order of magnitude, one is about 10 times larger than the other. If they differ by two orders of magnitude, they differ by about a factor of 100. So an example would be a human has an estimated height of 10 to the 0 meters, 1 meter. Canary Wharf, a tower block, well a tower building tower in London, has an estimated height of 10 to the 2 meters so it's 100 meters so what that telling us is is when we're working out the difference in size between two values you can calculate it by difference in size is approximately 10 to the power of the difference in the powers so what you would do is you'd have difference in size times by one and the number of zeros is the difference in powers so for example okay We'll make sure that we can always work out what the order of magnitude are. So uh, two numbers of the same order of magnitude have roughly the same scale and a larger value is less than 10 times small than a smaller value. So for example, Canary Wharf has an estimated height of 10 to the 2 meters, so it's 100 meters, but the Burj Khalifa has an estimated height of 10 to the 2, 828 meters. In indicating these estimations are really are an appropriate calculate, uh, uh, sorry, a rough calculation. Now remember, when you're using Using orders of magnitude. It's important to know that 10 to the 0 equals 1, 10 to the 1 equals 10, 10 to the 2 equals 100, 10 to the 3 equals 1000, 10 to the 4 equals 10,000, 10 to the 5 equals 100,000, 10 to the 6 equals 1 million, and 10 to the 7 equals 10 million. Now please remember that 10 to the 1 is equal to 1, sorry 10 to the 0 is equal to 1 and not 0. It's a common mistake people make in examinations. Now we shall use this notation to estimate values to the correct order of magnitude. 
magnitude and we can then combine the orders of magnitude when estimating more than one quantity. So this is important to note that if for example you want to work at, you want to estimate a more complex value such as density well it, as you know density is equal to mass over volume so if you estimate the mass of the water in this example to be 10 to the 2 and you estimate the volume of the pool to be 10 to the 2 to work out the density it's 10 to the 2 over 10 to the 2 so it's 100 over 100 so therefore it's 10 to the 0 it's 1 kilogram per meter cubed now remember if in your estimation with the um, equation that you use if you are dividing two indices the indices must subtract from each other so in this example 10 to the 2 divided by 10 to the 2 so you do 2 minus 2 which equals 0 so your overall answer is 10 to the 0 so it's 1 now another example could be estimate the energy needed to boil up a cup, a cup of water from room temperature to boiling now you know the equation is e equals mass times by specific heat capacity times by the change in temperature so what you've got to do is you estimate all the quantities so the mass of the water in the cup maybe 10 to the minus 1 kilograms the specific heat capacity of water about 10 to the 3 joules per kilogram per degree celsius and the change in temperature of water to boil in is about 10 to the 2 100 deg uh, degrees celsius so therefore when you are then working out the energy it's 10 to the minus 1 times by 10 to the 3 times by 10 to the 2 so it's 0 0.1 times by a thousand times by 100 which if you work it through is 1000 is 1000 or sorry my, my apologies okay it's going to be 10,000 so therefore you would have 10 to the 4 so what it would have is it would be 10 to the minus 1 10 to the 3 10 to the 2 now if you multiply into indices the indices add to each other so minus 1 plus 3 plus 2 is going to be equal to 4 so it's 10 to the 4 so what have we learned in today's lesson you should be able to understand what orders of magnitude are and have an estimation of approximate values of physical quantities you should be able to estimate approximate values of physical quantities to the nearest orders of magnitude and you should be able to use these estimates together with your knowledge of physics to provide further derived estimates also to the nearest order of magnitude so if you've been successful and you've learned in today's lesson you should be able to describe what an order of magnitude is detail why estimating values are important in physics and estimate basic values of dimensions i hope you've enjoyed today's lesson looking at the estimations topic in measurements and errors in aqa a level physics thank you and have a lovely day